In this video we are going to take a look at how we can link and how we can manipulate different file formats that could be architectural or structural file backgrounds for our projects. We are also going to take a look at a frustrating issue in regards of the discipline of the project and the way the Revit linked files look like. First I am going to open a new project and I want to open a plumbing project. I will go to browse and now I can either choose from the predefined templates or load our own template if we have one. I am going to start by linking a Revit file. So to do that I will go to insert tab and select link Revit. For the purpose of today's video I will use a sample Revit project. The files path is my computer, C drive or whatever drive Windows is installed on, program files, Autodesk. Revit 2022 because that's what I have installed. Scroll down and find samples folder and it's going to be this one right here. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I like to pin the linked file so I don't move it by accident. I will also move the elevation views all the way out of the building on the north, east, south and the east side. Usually when I start a project I don't want to use the linked file grid lines so I like to match the existing ones and create my own. GR is the shortcut for grid lines and I will use pick lines to set up my grid lines. I am going to start with grid line number 1 and I will skip grid line 1.1 because when I will do the next grid line it will automatically be set to 2 and then 3 and then so on. I will go ahead and do the same thing for the horizontal grid lines. I will click on the first top one and rename it A. And now all the following grid lines will be set in alphabetical order. And finally I will do grid lines F.1 and I will have to manually name it and also I don't want to forget about grid line 1.1. Now in order to see my options for how I can see this linked Revit file I need to go to visibility and graphics overrides. Here I need to go to Revit links where all the linked Revit files will be listed. Under the display column the default view of the linked files will be set to by host view. If I check by linked view options, I can see that linked view is no longer grayed out and now I can click to find the list of absolutely all the views that the architect set up in this Revit model. So for example, I will choose floor plan 01 entry level, press apply and then ok twice. Now I can see that the trees are gone and we have some annotation elements along with some tags. Let's say I would like to get rid of the room tags and maybe I want to show the columns in grey. To do that I need to go back to graphic overrides, Revit links, click the linked file under display settings and I will change the view to custom. This will not affect the way I currently view this linked file. Tags are annotation elements so I need to go to annotation categories. And if I want to be able to make any changes, I need to set it up to custom. And unfortunately there is no door tag in the list. And the reason why is because in the filter list the architecture category is not checked. And since door tags are under this category, now I can go down the list and uncheck the visibility for door tags. I will press apply and I can already see the tags are gone. Since grid lines are also annotative elements and I made my own grid lines, I can also look down the list to hide the grid lines of the linked file. If I look for structural columns, I will not be able to find anything but some tags and that is because the columns are model elements, therefore I need to go to model categories. And if I press S on the keyboard, I will jump straight to structural columns. Under the cut patterns column I will click to overwrite. 
Let's do a solid fill for pattern and the dark gray as a color. Now I press apply and then ok, but nothing changed. And here is the issue that hopefully Autodesk will address in future versions. The reason nothing changed in terms of overriding the fill pattern is because the discipline of this view is currently set to plumbing. If I change this to coordination, now my background looks totally different and I can see all the changes I made for the columns that are now grey circles. All except this wider column. Let's find out how we can turn this one grey too. Going back to visibility overrides, select linked Revit model display and go back to model categories. Look for structural columns and now I will also change the patterns for projection and surface with a field grade pattern. These patterns will be affected depending on the elevation or according to how the view is cutting through these elements. Now when I press apply and then ok, all my columns should be grey. Ok, so now back to discipline. Why would I care to be in plumbing instead of coordination? When I draw a pipe that is for example at 9 feet elevation and then I draw another one that is it is crossing it at a higher elevation I can see these nice gaps that hint crossing pipes at different elevations which is a pretty cool feature. However, it works only under the plumbing discipline. And by the way, if you're wondering, this is how Revit shows pipes in coarse and medium view. If I change the display to fine and shade it and turn on thin lines, it will actually look like this. But let's reset the view and I will show you how it changes when I set the discipline back to coordination. As you can see there is no gap and the crossing pipes look like a regular cross. Fortunately there is a workaround. I will set up this view to plumbing discipline. Then I will duplicate it and name it level 1 background. Now I make sure I'm in this new view called background and I will set up the discipline to coordination. So now I have two of the same views but with different disciplines. Since I want to put these two together, I don't want to have duplicate elements visible. In background view, when I go to visibility overrides, I want to uncheck all the architectural, structural and infrastructural elements to exclude them. Right now I have only plumbing, mechanical and electrical elements. I click all to select what is left and uncheck them, meaning that in this particular view I won't see pipes, ducts, electric and other MEP elements. Also I want the lines for this background to be a little lighter, so under Revit links I will check the linked file under the halftone column. If I want to control how light this halftone will be, I just need to go to manage tab, click on additional settings and on the drop down list I will find half tone and underlay and I will make the half tone a little bit darker. The only way this will work is when we put these two views on the same sheet. I will make a new sheet. And bring level 1 plumbing in. When I double click inside the view on a sheet, the particular view will be activated. Now I can make changes and I will set up the scale to 1 over 16. Double click again, this time outside the view. Now the view will be deactivated. I will drag it and then leave it somewhere around here. Now I will bring level 1 background and drag it in the same sheet. Same procedure, double click to activate view, set up the scale to 1 over 16, double click anywhere outside the view. I am not going to need the viewport, so I will drag it down somewhere around here. You will notice that if you are trying to move the view, there is nothing to snap to. And we need to snap to some elements to make sure we perfectly align these two views. The only way to do this is to double click to activate the view and draw two reference lines like so.
I will zoom out and click twice outside to deactivate the view and these reference planes will now be visible in all views at the particular location. If I zoom out and deactivate the view, I will try again using the move command to snap to the intersection of the reference plane but it seems that nothing is happening. It might take a few seconds till Revit understands what I'm trying to do here but for the moment I will go ahead and move this view inside the sheet and I can see now that there is a purple square that indicates I can now snap to something. You might have to play around with this because it does, it's not gonna show up right away. Using move command I will drag the other view and overlay it on top of the other by snapping to the same point. And you would think that the plumbing view would be on top of the background, but it is not. And the reason I know this is because the pipes I drew by grid line C are not visible in the sheet where I put the two views together. So let's do this again. I will go back and delete these two views. And by doing that, it doesn't mean I'm deleting the views from the project. It just means I'm removing them from this sheet. And the trick is that the first view that is introduced in the sheet will be the one that will be on the bottom and the following views will be on top of the other. So I need to bring the background view first and then I will bring the plumbing view, place it here and use the move tool to look for the snap point so I can accurately match it to the background view. There are a couple more things to do. In the background view I want to hide the grid lines. So in visibility graphics overrides I'm going to the annotation tab and look for grid lines. I also need to hide the Revit linked model in the plumbing view because I don't need to see it twice and that was not the way I wanted to see it in the first place because of the plumbing discipline. So again, visibility graphics windows, this time I will go to Revit links tab and under I will uncheck that little box under visibility. Now I'm going back to the sheet to see how everything looks like so far. There are two viewports intersecting each other. So I will try and drag the one that says background and send it outside the sheet area. Make sure I select the viewport line, not the view itself. A viewport that is outside the sheet not, will not show up when I print. And I will keep this one, but I will rename it one or maybe capital X. Now when I double click on the view, only the view that is on top will be activated which is the one with the plumbing discipline. In this moment I have the background just the way I wanted it and I can draw my pipes while still benefiting of the plumbing discipline features. And the fun fact for who is interested, if you want to play with this gap here in the systems tab under the plumbing and piping there is a tiny little arrow that goes to mechanical settings. Here I can change the dimensions of inside and outside gap and single line. And also under the pipe settings I can change the size of the riser and drop annotation symbol. AutoCAD files can be also linked and imported and even though there are not as many options to customize the display settings, there are still a lot of things we can manipulate in Revit. So I have opened a new plumbing project and when I go to insert tab there are two options for CAD files. Link CAD will automatically update and changes done to that file after it was linked in the project. Contrary to import CAD that will not reflect any changes done to the source file after it was imported. I am going to use a link file I saved previously in a DWG format in my documents folder. If the file is already set with the desired colors, the best option to choose in terms of colors is preserve. If not, black and white will just turn all CAD layers in black. Also here you can also set up the units and tell Revit on which level you want to show this file. Now the CAD file is linked to the project and the first thing I want to do is to hide the section lines. 
When selected, the CAD file will have an option in the ribbon called Query. And when activated, I can click on elements from the AutoCAD file and they will going to show me a few information like the name of the layer. If I click Hide in View, the whole layer and all associated elements are not going to be visible anymore. I will also do the same to hide the door tag layer. Same like I did with the other project. Here I also want to move these elevation views in the exterior of the building. Using gridline command I have the possibility to snap to existing grid lines shown in the CAD file. After I set up all my grid lines, I want to hide the grid line layer in the linked CAD file and it might be a little bit tricky to select it. I will have to use tab on my keyboard to make it easier. Once I have the CAD file selected, I will go to query, select the grid line and hide it. Unfortunately, we cannot manipulate a field region of a column like we did in Revit, but we can change the weight and the color of any layer. While I have query activated, if I click on the column, I can see the layer name is S-COLS. To manipulate this layer, I need to go to Visibility Overrides under Imported Categories, even though it's a little bit confusing since this is a linked file and not an imported one. But anyways, all CAD files can be found here. If I click to this plus icon, I will be able to see all the layers of this CAD file. Therefore, I need to look for S-COLS and by pressing S on my keyboard, I will jump straight to it. Here I can see that the pattern and halftone columns are not available, but I can change the line weight, style and color. Let's make this a solid line, dark gray with a weight of 5. Halftone is not available for individual layers, but I can check the halftone box of the entire CAD file. Now I will press apply and then ok to make it official. The last format that can be linked and imported in Revit is a PDF file. And there is not much we can do to these files, but we still have couple of helpful features. I will go ahead and link a PDF file that I also have in my documents folder. I want to set it up to 300 dpi and then click ok and surprise nothing is happening. This might mean the PDF files are not visible in this view. So again I need to access graphics overrides and in Revit PDF files are under raster images which I need to check. Now the open file window automatically popped up to my documents folder where I can open the PDF file again. The DPI is already set to 300, I will just press OK and place it somewhere here in the middle. These kind of files are usually not to scale so they have to be resized and I will zoom in here by these grid lines where I can see some dimensions. Before I resize, I will see in the ribbon that when selected, PDF files have an option called Enable Snaps. I will click to activate it and now I can snap to all the lines in the PDF file. Using the scale command, I will click first to grid line number 3 and then to grid line number 4 and I can stretch it by a number of units and I will type the dimension shown below which is 6299 millimeters I suppose and even if I'm in imperial measurement system as a default for this particular Revit project if I type MM at the end Revit will make the conversion to millimeters automatically even though I cannot change the way lines look or other elements in this PDF file I still have snap to lines and I can still use this to snap to grid lines. It is just gonna be a little bit inconvenient because lines come shorter and they need to be dragged all the way to the bottom or to the exterior of the project. So these are a few methods to manipulate different file formats to work with in Revit. If you know even more ways to customize these files let me know in the comments below.